welcome to the special show on money control and I'm your host Ruchira Sharma. Climate change and renewable energy is no longer a conversation that can be deferred. The PM committed to stringent measures to fight climate change during the COP26 climate summit in Glasgow, including plans to ensure that half of the nation's energy mix comes from sources other than fossil fuels by the year 2030. In fact, India also pledged to become a net zero carbon emitter by the year 2070 and enhanced, enhanced targets for renewable energy deployment and reduction in carbon emissions. So while India Inc. welcomed the PM's pledge for the country to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2070, these numbers are rather ambitious. So the question is, how are some of the country's major companies contributing to this target? And to know more about that, I'm in conversation with Mr. Amit Jain, Global CEO at Sterling and Wilson Renewable Energy. Welcome to the show, sir. It's great to have you here with us. Thank you. And thanks for having me over. So my first question to you, sir, is, this, is the Indian industry making enough significant progress in the climate mitigation space? And how can India Inc. facilitate an environment of great to green economy and push the cause of renewable energy? Yes, uh, you are right that we are on a right track, though it's the targets are very ambitious and we have to take huge steps and policy changes to achieve that. But to give you a perspective that renewable generation addition capacity has mm -hmm. taken place at a very fast pace in last few years and reporting a CAGR of 15.5% over last five years. The solar generation capacity has also increased by more than five times in last five years from 6.7 gigawatts to 45 gigawatts in March 2021. Though as a country, we are targeting to have 500 gigawatts by 2030. Mm -hmm. and, to, uh, and out of that, solar is expected to contribute 280 gigawatts. Though we have progressed uh, in last few years, but it is not good enough to achieve the targets which we are targeting for 2030. So we have to take huge steps to achieve those targets. Policy streamlining is must, and we have to create an environment to spur the investment in the sector. So first of all, the, uh, we have to address the financial health of the discoms uh, on which government is working to reform mm -hmm. the sector, to have the payment securitization of discoms, payment mechanism by LCs, GST regime, the module manufacturing in India, and also mm -hmm. the Draft Electricity Act, which stipulates enforceability of RPO, easing of open access tariffs, has to be implemented sooner. So uh, India Inc. definitely plays a crucial role in this journey of sustainability to meet the COP26 targets. But let us take a broad overview of the renewable energy sector in the country and also review the provisions for the sector in the union budget 21-22. What are your insights on that behalf? Yeah, so the major provisions in the budget for 2022 was around boosting the module manufacturing capacity in India and strengthening the financial muscles of the PSU, towards which government allocated 197,000 crores over a period of five years starting at 521, including 4,500 crores towards uh, new generation module manufacturing capacities through PLI schemes. So government came out with the PLI bids and which were very successful and oversubscribed. And looking at the interest in those bids, government came out uh, with a proposal of bringing out additional 9,500 of PLI schemes, which have already been approved in principle. So government also infused 1,000 crores in SECI to came out with tenders of 15 gigawatt per annum and Seki was successful in bringing out floating the tenders of 15 gigawatt in financial years 21-22. Similarly, the government infused 1,500 crores in the RETA mm -hmm. to finance the new technologies and providing funding to the renewable energy sector. So the provisions were made, but I don't think they commensurate with the targets which we have to meet in 2030. Exactly. So we have more expectations in the budget to come to spur the growth to the required levels. Definitely, we have a long way to cover. And as you rightly said, while the budget outlined reforms and initiatives towards boosting the non-conventional energy sector in India, uh, there is a lot more to be done. 
So according to you, what are the key policies and changes that we can foresee and anticipate in the coming budget to accommodate the promise that was made so, in COP26? Yeah. So in forthcoming budget, I can see because hydrogen mission was announced by Honorable Prime Minister last mm -hmm. year. So we can see more and more policy around green hydrogen. We, we, I can see the policy, the custom duties coming down on your electrolyzers coming down and more budgetary allocation to incentivize production of green hydrogen at a cheaper price. So because economy is going to be centered around green hydrogen, so major incentives will come in that direction. The PLI size of PLI schemes to in, in, incentivize module manufacturing will also go up. We, I see the major allocations coming towards module manufacturing. The government is going to come out with RTC tenders and the battery prices continues to be very high. So I see the similar effort in that direction and increasing in PLI amounts for manufacturing of batteries in India. I see the clearance of bill pending for discom reforms should be okay. resolved in this budget and more budgetary allocation will be done to improve their financial health. The streamlining of GST. So GST, okay. there is a lot of ambiguity around GST. So in this budget, yes. we hope that electricity sector should be brought under the ambit of GST and the solar contracts which have multiple slabs on a single mm -hmm. contract should be streamlined to a single slab to bring down the cost of solar installation and reduce the ambiguity in the sector so these are the major reforms which we see happening this year in the budget so clearly uh, enormous potential is there and coherent policy measures and an investor friendly administration will be the key driver for india to become a global leader but uh, moving on, uh, Sterling and Wilson Renewable Energy is a global pure play end-to-end -end renewable engineering, procurement and construction solution provider with a presence in more than 25 countries. So how is Sterling and Wilson Renewable Energy delivering sustainable solutions through its solar EPC and ONM solutions? Yeah, so we are end-to-end -end engineering procurement and construction company. And we are using our in-house engineering strength to deliver the most competitive solution to IPPC and IPPs across the world. So we, we optimize the cost of construction through our innovative engineering methods for utility scale solar plants, floating solar, battery and energy storage systems. So we are right now actively working in more than 25 countries and we have delivered some of the landmark projects. In Abu Dhabi, in UAE, we constructed 1177 megawatt Noor Abu Dhabi project, which is the largest uh, single development in the um, across the globe. So uh, through our innovative systems in that particular mm -hmm. plant, we packed the maximum amount of power than any other company who participated in the bid for that project. So similarly, we are providing very innovative solution with maximum generation capacities. Mm -hmm. with our solutions to IPPs and offering value solutions to them. So do you think that uh, the PM's commitments are an opportunity to actually inculcate sustainability across your operations? Yeah, definitely. It's a huge opportunity for all of us. So in our operations, now we are looking at a huge portfolio in India in coming mm -hmm. years. So there we'll be streamlining our operations, come up with more innovative methods and make uh, very efficient supply chains. So sure. the kind of scales which are coming up in India will give us economies mm -hmm. of scales and we will be able to experiment with various multiple systems, multiple modules, which will be coming in coming years and we'll be able to offer new and new innovative solutions to our customers across the globe, including in India. So we are looking at capacity addition of to the tune of 30 to 40 gigawatts per annum in India. So sure. which will give us a huge, huge portfolio in India. And we'll be experimenting with various new engineering solutions to optimize the cost. And we take back those lessons to all our global customers and other Indian customers so that we can improvise and give them very efficient solution to bring down the cost of the solar energy in India. So, sir, just before we wrap up, uh, let us take a crystal ball and kind of gaze into the future. So, how are companies like yours increasing the country's renewable power capacity and also anticipating the needs of the future? Yeah. So, we are 
providing EPC services, like a fast uh, implementation of projects on the ground is sure. needs efficient project implementation company, the companies which can provide it robust engineering solutions. So we are in that space and having installed 11.6 gigawatt of projects across the world. So we, ha we have that capacity. So we are providing innovative cost optimum solutions to all of our customer and continuously working on all the evolving technologies so that the benefits of that te technology in terms of implementation can be passed on to our customers. So we are working towards that. So be it like this industry, the technological mm -hmm. landscape is so fast that module technology is changing every quarter. The tracker technologies and use of AI is becoming very common in the industry. And we are adopting all those technologies, whether be it our project implementation on EPC side or our O&M practices. We have highly mm -hmm. automated O&M services for our 6.6 .6 gigawatt of portfolio and in which we are providing um, very good availability and power generation to all our customers. All right, sir. So clearly certain companies like yours, like Sterling and Wilson Renewable Energy are definitely working towards energizing India. But just one last question before we wrap up on this session. Um, what are the challenges that India Inc. faces while they make an attempt to invest in innovative projects and new technologies? You just mentioned AI technologies and new age technologies. So what are the challenges that are faced by companies in this regard? Good. Challenges faced by the companies is that that industry is still evolving. The module manufacturing capacity in India is very, very low, and we are totally dependent upon Chinese modules to right. uh, install the kind of capacities we are talking about. And as far as the technology is concerned, so in-house, R&D is not happening. So we are depending upon you know, the work which is happening in other countries to implement the solutions in India. So as the, with the PLI schemes, more and more capacity addition will happen in the country, the more R&D will happen and country will be able to adopt uh, the new technologies at more economic prices and more, more economically options in India. Definitely. So thank you so much, sir, for sharing these insights. Clearly, India Inc. needs to invest in inno innovative projects and new technologies, reassess their business models, reduce their carbon footprint to make the necessary transition to sustainability and guarantee a cleaner, safer and healthier planet for generations to come. I was in conversation with Mr. Amit Jain, Global CEO, Sterling and Wilson Renewable Energy. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you all for watching the show.